In this web tutorial, I'll be showing you and explaining how to code the dog age calculator. I created a new project called dog age, and that is the solution. Here's the project. I had a form. I renamed the form to FRM dog age. And make sure you leave the .cs. Once I had the form, I changed a few properties on it. Let's start at the top. I didn't have to give it a name here because I gave it a name up here when I renamed it. <clears throat> As we go through, anything in bold is what I changed. <clears throat> I added three buttons, Compute, Clear, and Exit to the form. I linked the button Exit to the Cancel button. That is when I hit the Escape key. When the form is displayed, it acts the same as if I come up and click on Exit. We're going to go through the code and look at some other things. The start position, I set the property to be center of screen. And I also changed the text, which is what displays here, to Brian's dog gauge. I then brought over a label, and we named it label dog gauge. I have another label I added to the form, and it's called Label Human Age. Labels are found here. I then added two text boxes, one here and one here. Let's go look at the properties of this text box. The first thing I did was name it as Text Dog Age. And I had the text align to the right. Because when you have numeric, you always align to the right. True text, like someone's name, would be left aligned. And I blanked out any text that might have been there. And I set the tab index to 1. You'll come to see what that is in a few moments. I then cl click on this text box. And it's called Text Human Age. And let's go through and look at some of the properties. Notice I set its max length to 3 because the computed human age will not be more than 999. Notice I made it read only. That's what makes it look gray out. I only want people to input into this text box, not this one. That is why I made it read only. I set the tab index to false, which means when I hit the tab key, it will skip over this and I text align it as right. Let's go look at the exit button. The exit button is called BTN exit, and its text is exit ampersand XIT. The ampersand is what we call a hotkey, and I will demonstrate that. Let's go look at the clear button. We named it button clear. We change its text to be clear. Clear will show up right there. And then we have the compute, and you guessed it, it is called button compute. BTN compute and we put the text as compute. Let's go take a look at the code. Remember we have a text box here called text dog age and a text box called text human age. The goal of this program is to take in user input, do a calculation, and show the equivalent human ages for a dog. Let's double click on compute. Remember when you double click on that, that brings up the code window. If you want to get back to the design, see up here's a tab, just click there. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take the text box, text dog age dot text, the text that's in this dog text age text box, convert it to a single float. If you remember in your data type, in your data type conversion, we had exposure to these concepts. But again, a computer doesn't understand text. You can't do math with text. So we need to convert it to a float. And the reason we chose a float is because a user can enter in such as 6.5 years of a dog's age. So we take the text that's in this text box, convert it to a single. A single means float. And we put it into this variable. It is now a numeric, so now I can do a calculation with it. Notice you put the data type first. Hungarian notation means you put the data type as a prefix, such as F or FLT. Now 
now we take the text that was converted to a numeric and we multiply it by 7.3f. F means it's a float. So you're taking a float and multiplying it by 7.3, which is also float, and then putting the answer into human age. The last thing we need to do now is take the computed float human age and show the user in the other text box. This is the output only text box. So take the value from a number, convert it to a string, and assign it to this text box. Okay, let's go back to the form. You can also click right here to bring the form up. And let's go look at the clear button. When you click on the clear button, it will clear out whatever you typed into the text dog age text box. And it will also clear out any computed value that the user may have seen. And then we set the focus. The focus moves the cursor back to the text dog age text box so the user can now enter in the next value. Let's go back to the form. And the exit is application.exit. And remember, it's a method, so you need the parentheses. And I do want to show you one other thing here. Right here, this is called the breakpoint. And how you get a breakpoint is you go under debug. And the reason I have a breakpoint is because I want to show you how the code executes. You can go to debug, and you can see if I'm on a line, all I have to do is a F9 to either make the breakpoint go away or come back. I can also double click here in the, what we call the gutter. This is called the gutter. See it's gone, it's back, and you're going to see the power of debug. Red means stop, so we're going to go play. Now notice the form's in the center of the screen. I hit the tab key, and because I made this tab index 1, notice it skips down. This was 2, but I made it tab stop false. This is 3, tab 4, 5. Notice when I hit the alt key, the shortcut hotkey shows up. See the underscore under the X? So I'm going to hit the clear, and notice it clears out the two text boxes, which nothing was there anyways, and positions me right here. I'm going to enter in the age of my dog, Moose, of 7. I'm going to tab and hit compute, and watch. The code's going to stop executing right here so I can see what's happening. Okay? The program's not broken. It's just allowing me to debug and see what's going on. If I hover here, see the quotes around it? quote, seven quote, that means we entered in a text value of seven. After this line executes, it's going to convert seven to a number. So make sure you see the quote, seven quote. Okay, if I go to debug and I want to step through and watch the code execute, I'm going to hit F10. So come back here. I'm going to hit the F10 key, which you can't see, but I guarantee you I am. So look what happened. It took the text seven and I hover on this variable and now it shows us 7.0. So now there's no quotes around it. I can do math with it. So I'm going to take 7.0. Let me hover and multiply it by this. And it's going to put the answer in there. So remember, it breaks on the line before it shows you. So the answer now is 51.1. We take the 51.1, which is a number. But now we need to convert it back to a text so we can see it. Make sure you have the dot text property. We step through it. Notice it hits the bottom of the code, start and end, and I hit F10 again. Whenever you see yellow and you're in debug mode, hit F10, and the form shows up, and there it is. I'm going to do a new one. And look, the debug is still happening. So if you don't want to go step through the code, remember, F10 steps you through the code, just hit F5 to continue or hit the play button. I'm just going to hit F5. Okay, the form comes up. I'm going to enter my other dog's age, and that is Katie. That is actually Moose's mom. So she's 8, and I'm going to hit compute. And look, now it takes the 8 text, converts it to 8.0, multiplies 8.0 times 7.3, 3, and puts it into 58.4. And now we're going to convert 58.4 to a string and then assign it to this text box. And I hit F5 or F10, and there's the result. If I'd like to get rid of the breakpoint, say we have another dog who is now 3. I hit Compute. I don't want a breakpoint anymore. I can either come up to Debug, and I can turn the breakpoint off by this, or I just come over the gutter, click there. Notice no more red. I come up and hit Continue or Debug. F5, and it will continue to run. 
and a three-year-old dog is equivalent to about a 21, almost 22 point, 22 year old person. And let's enter one more and notice there's no more break point. And there you go. Break points are really nice because it helps you understand what's going on with the code.